On Facing the Crowd, we are in Walkerville in the Midvale to meet with entrepreneur Gugu Mlifa, owner of Gugu and Daughters Farming. Now we hear about a journey from being a hawker to an award-winning agro-processing farm and not to forget a successful entrepreneur. I'm your host, Liesl Wilson. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Small Holdings in the Midval and it's owned by entrepreneur Gugu Mdifa. Gugu, thank you for allowing us to spend some time with you just to learn about your journey. I'm happy to have you here. Where did it all start for you? I mean, you're from KwaZulu-Natal and you end up in Johannesburg, but in between, what was life growing up like for you? I enjoyed a very healthy, good childhood in mm -hmm. KZN. Uh, we're all raised in the village and we're, part, we're that generation where this principle that it takes a village to raise a child, yes, where everybody would pick you up, put you straight, discipline you, yes, so yeah, we grew up, this is, actually I didn't go to school to learn this, this is what we did at home, farming, looking after the cattle, collecting water from the river, milking the cows, it was a self-sufficient life, mm. and when I came to Johannesburg, I just did what I did at home. When did you decide to come to Johannesburg and actually pursue this as your career? We all leave KZN and come to Johannesburg looking for better ch chances in life. But when I got to Johannesburg, I did exactly what I loved at home. Got doing, like it started with the, as a home garden, you know, for growing vegetables for my family. But then, I guess the produce, the harvest was always good, and then we'll have excess and I'll go and sell. So I started out as a hawker, selling in the tax rank, and in, in the corners, yes. And when you decided to sell the excess and naturally become the entrepreneur, that spirit that you already encompassed, I mean, what were some of the challenges that you faced back then? Uh, when I was uh, selling in the tax rank, it were, I didn't really have challenges because it was my produce. Challenges came in when I went into formal business. Um, that's when uh, going to formal markets. That's when we started having challenges. Challenges in terms of logistics, um, getting certified, you know, all the requirements, rules and regulations with, with supplying formal businesses. Yeah, so I supplied the hospitality industry and it's got tons and tons of rules and regulations. But I can understand it's food. Mm. Yeah, so you don't want to mess up with food safety. I think a lot of entrepreneurs will tell you they've, been, they've gone through cases where they don't, they don't have diesel in the car, the electricity is not paid, the phone is not paid. So, I mean, yeah, it's month end, employees are not paid. We go through all that. So yeah, cash flow, we've, we've experienced it all, mm -hmm. you know. But um, luckily, I've never felt like giving up. I, I felt like going back home to KZN, yeah. you, 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 you know. Uh, but <clears throat> I would say the challenges are really the, the normal challenges of cash flow, mm. um, employees, uh, not getting the necessary skills that they need to be, to be able to deliver the service that we require. Can you think of one of your lowest moments back then when you started out, where you mentioned some of the issues that you faced? What kept you going and moving during that period? I'll give you a practical example. You've got a purchase order. Um, so the order is there. A lot of people, they, they want to have an order, but you've got an order, but you can't do the job. One thing, you don't have funds to do the job. 
and when you look at at at, the, at your garden, mm -hmm. yes, you may have produce, but um, there's an electricity that is not paid, mm -hmm. so you cannot run the pump and irrigate. So even the produce is not at a good quality that you can do. So it's things like that, mm -hmm. and having to say I cannot, I cannot do it. I, I cannot. It's it's difficult, mm -hmm. you, you know, and. Being an entrepreneur, in, especially an agricultural entrepreneur, you f find it very difficult to find financing or someone to believe in you or to believe in what you're doing. Mm. Yeah. Who came through for you in that way? I mean, who helped propel you when you were facing all those challenges? I think my breakthrough came in 2007 when I first applied my first formal client, which was Bedwood Hotel. and. A chef, his name was Chef Oret Morolo. He is now at uh, Marion and William Nico. Okay. Um, he's the one who actually believed in me and gave me a chance to bring my produce to him. And he paid me on a weekly basis. So instead of going out there to get a big loan to grow, they were able to grow with me and teach me. So a lot of the processing stuff that we've learned, we actually learned it from his kitchen at Birchwood Hotel. And then when you were a hawker and a vendor selling at taxi ranks, etc., when did the idea of Gugu and Daughters farming come about? When you grew the wrong crops. When you grew the formal crops, your broccoli, cauliflower. Yes. And the black people were not taking it at the taxi rank. And everyone was saying, you grew white people's crops, go and find them to sell it to them. So that's mm. how it came about. So I actually literally had to go and look for the white people to take the cauliflower and broccoli. And how easy or difficult was that process? It was a bit difficult because then I had to do f formal marketing to call. You know, you call, you've never really done marketing. Uh, I want to talk to the kitchen manager and you don't even speak English well. Uh, I've got lettuce, I've got broccoli, cauliflower. You want, you, can I come and show you? Mm. And then, yeah, luckily he said, come and you don't even have i didn't even know then that you have to have a refrigerated car to take it so that time i just had an open buggy off i went to bedwood with my dish on yes. my head knocked at the reception knock 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 i'm looking for the chef yes chef yes and i had all my produce in my head and then they directed me where the chef was. And then I walked to the kitchen with my produce on it. There's the stuff I said. The produce was good. Then he took me through and said, okay, you need to cover your car. You need to pack it like this. No, I don't want spinach and bunches. I want you to cut it for me, wash and cut. Back home, wash and cut. Yes. And then when I take it back, but it's got water and all that, okay. You need it, you need, it mustn't, it, it was like, it mustn't have water, it must be dry, and you know that spinach yes. bag you put in? Yes. I just took it there, put it in, springed it outside, the kitchen, and he looked at me, then he told me there's something called a spin dryer, you spin dry the spinach, so that it doesn't come with water and like that, so it's been those little, little the, yes. lessons along the way yeah wow yeah so now we've got a spin drying machine that i didn't even know it existed and i'm sure that's one of many um one of many technologies that you own now that's helped your your days become a lot easier mm, no 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 it wasn't and then the next order was your mixed veg i remember we ordered mixed veg exotic lettuce i didn't know what was that and being an entrepreneur, you don't really say, I don't know. So you take the order and then you go and hustle and find what is that. So it turned out, in case at the end there's nothing, there's no mixed veggies. You eat, you eat your pap and roh with yes. no mixed veg. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's either mass or pap and roh. So now here you have to know how to make a mixed veg. And then there was a junior chef there. His name was Andre. And then... He said, you must come in the morning. I'll teach you how to make mixed veg. 
And then, then there was crops like petty pens, things never knew what was petty pens, baby marrow, because we didn't grow such crops in KZN, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, but now I grow high value crops. I say I grow crops for the rich. Yes. You know? <laughs> yeah, things that I didn't do, but yeah, that has been the journey. And then w with that coming in, uh, because as much as the chef wanted to support me, mm -hmm. but then the very same kitchen had also safety, uh, food safety issues that they had to adhere to. So we needed to had to comply with HACCP. We needed to comply with the cold chain, um, you know, and then the chef life. So you had to um, comply with all these rules and regulations. The refrigerator truck, be HACCP compliant, build a facility that is acceptable to be able to deliver food. I understood the importance of it. I mean, you don't want people coming to a conference and they're all sick, they've got running stomach because of some virus, because the food was not, it had germs or was not well packed from a facility that is clean. Mm. So how long after you came to Johannesburg and you started selling, you know, your crops at the um, taxi rank, did you decide, oh, this is taking its toll on me and, and you wanted to rush back home? Like, how long have you been doing that? I think it came, I think my lowest moment came when I actually did not understand what does it mean to be paid 30 days on statement. And come month end, I'm expecting to be paid. I've got employees to pay. I've got delivery vehicles to pay. And zip. Mm. And now, remember, you were getting your money, at least you had some money coming in on a daily basis and the tax rank. Mm. Here, you are supplying daily. You're not getting sent, you're not paid daily. So you are faced with employees, which you have to tell them a story. You have a bank, who you are owing a car, that you have to tell a story. And you find yourself, you, you feel like you're a criminal because you, you, you get so bad that here yeah, you must make an arrangement at school. You must, even when you're dropping your kid at school and a teacher is looking at you, you feel like they're saying, why are you not paying? When are you paying? Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And being not financially literate, let me put it like sure. that, a, a lot of things like your cash flow planning, I didn't understand them. I, I didn't understand I didn't understand that mm. so yeah and that was the time when I really felt mm -mm. maybe let me go back home and when you were that low I mean what keeps your spirit going when well, you know that you are not responsible for yourself but you've got other people that you're employing and they've got families that they've got to support as well I think prayer and also not wanting to disappoint, you know, accountability, being accountable to other people. There are people who you've employed who are looking upon you, you, you know. You can't, it's, it just cannot be enough to say, okay, we wait another 60 days, really, you must make a plan. And in, in, in the 60 days, remember, you cannot also say to the client, I'm not supplying you. I, they, your guests are not eating, we have to keep going. So yeah, that toughens you up actually a lot. And then you also see who's there for you. That's when you knock on doors and people you thought, oh, skim some, it's not my skim. Exactly. <laughs> when you are now, when you are out and low on money, you know, yeah. Who were some of the people that came through for you in, in terms of that support structure back then when you, when you realized you were in that crisis? My mom, my husband, my brother-in-law, mm. mm. yeah. Luckily, I have a, I had a very, you know, strong support structure. Mm. Yes, yeah. And then, of course, my children. Um, they, yeah, they keep me going. They, they actually, they are my cheerleaders. They keep, yeah. They won't moan about this. They can see which they say, okay, there's nothing in the fridge. There's nothing. They won't nag you about this. Is, we don't have this and this and this. You know, they could understand. And they always took the initiative too to go out and sell. 
So that's why my daughter, Michael, who had a stall at the farmer's market. So every Saturday, there will also be money coming in from her, you know, things like that. Yes, and that's how it um, spirals on generation to generation. Ma, well, what an interesting journey this far. I really, really cannot wait to hear more. It is time for a quick break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned.